So I'm here with the KTM 390 Adventure, a cracking little adventure bike that I've borrowed from them for a couple of weeks and I've thoroughly enjoyed riding. I always try and judge adventure bikes on being all-rounders. Some people want to tour on them, some people want to do a bit of off-roading on them. Every bike should be fun on twisty roads. And then realistically, at this price point and size of engine, a lot of these will be sold as commuters. So in and around town, they've got to perform as well. So I'll go through each of those categories and tell you what I think of it. But before we get started, if you're new here and you want to see more reviews like this, motorcycle news, latest rumors, then please do remember to hit subscribe. So first we'll talk about motorway riding because that's what I've just done to get here to shoot. And I think your first question with this sort of bike would be, is 43 horsepower enough for long distance motorcycle touring? I probably don't think so. I think it's a little bit underpowered for like two, three, four hours on the motorway, but it's comfortable up to about 70, even 80. And for little stints getting between fun roads for getting between green lanes and also for just getting into town it's certainly adequate for those little stretches now it is a single cylinder engine so it does vibe a little bit i had the vitpillen 701 recently from husvana same company obviously as ktm got used to it and actually really liked the torquey nature of it but i must say on this bike when you do get up to 70 that's when you start to notice the vibes a little bit six seven thousand revs in that kind of area it starts to come on now it's not terrible there are rubbers in the foot pegs which you can remove if you want more grip for off-roading but that rubber insert does take some of the buzz out of the foot pegs the bars i didn't notice it too much and it's really when i was pushing back on the seat to stretch out and the back of my bum started to touch the pillion seat then when there was a lot of contact from the seat i noticed the vibes but really it is bearable and like i say you're not going to be doing like three four hundred mile days on this bike realistically those short stints it's plenty comfy enough in terms of comfort and time spent in the saddle now it really depends what sort of height you are and what sort of bum you've got i suppose but 855 millimeters does make for quite a tall bike if you're tall that's a great thing there's a lot of space for a small bike it feels very spacious and you know you're not going to feel cramped after a decent day of riding obviously it's got fairly wide high bars being that adventure style and there is room to slide around on the seat so like i say if you're a taller rider this really might be one to look at in the smaller capacity segment on the flip side if you're not that comfortable on a tall bike like this you know you won't notice it when you're moving when you're on the motorway you might enjoy that space but when you come to a stop it's going to be a long old reach down to the floor you're certainly going to have to slip one bum cheek off the saddle and make sure you get a foot down there's a lowering kit which brings it down by 25 mils to 830 but that's still pretty tall for some people and from what i've seen in youtube comments you know some shorter riders aren't comfortable with much more than 800 mils so those riders might be better looking at something like the 390 duke there's an off-road seat which is more like a bench seat so you know if you don't find this seat comfortable you could always try that and then there's an ergo seat so i think a bit more padding and I think it's heated as well. So that's another option if you are putting in a lot of miles, especially in winter. You can play around with it a little bit, but personally, you know, I found it very comfortable, very spaced out. I quite like a firm seat, um, so it did nicely for me. Now it does come with the hand guards as standard, so they keep a little bit of the wind off your hands. So on a cold day, the wind chill won't be so bad on your knuckles, but this stubby screen, you know, that really is like riding a naked bike. There's a lot of blast in your face on the top part of your chest. So if you're looking to do more long distance riding then the accessories catalog is your friend there's a taller screen there and that's certainly something to look into the tft dash is excellent really good visibility when you're on the road and you can connect to the ktm my ride app so you can get navigation through there so if you prefer to have you know an integrated system like that rather than a separate sat nav or your phone on the bars then you have that option i think it's eight quid though for the app which seems a bit like an unnecessary charge to say you've spent a good few grand on a motorcycle it's also got a little sat nav mount just above the screen as well to give it that real rally look and i know some riders do prefer a separate sat nav where all the maps are downloaded and you've got it wired into the 12 volt socket on the dash here 
totally understand that and there's that option if you do want it the other big concern for long distance riding is not having to stop to fill up that regularly 14 and a half liters the tank so it's decent given the size of the engine and the fuel economy ktm quote 400 kilometers range that's about 250 miles i think so depends on your riding style but i think at least 200 miles out of a tank is um, reasonable to expect so obviously you know there are better bigger bikes that will pull well on the motorway overtake a little bit easier there's stuff that's got better wind protection but as one part of what this bike can do i'd say it's pretty decent it wouldn't necessarily be my first choice but it can definitely handle a reasonable amount of motorway riding now let's talk about off-road and that's what i've come to do a bit more of today there's a green lane just down here nothing particularly hardcore i'm not exactly like dakar rally winning material i know that but really that's the sort of riding that someone with this bike would do if you're a serious off-roader you're going to buy a enduro bike or you might buy a sort of bigger adventure bike for long distance off-road gravel riding this is you know a bike that if you want to do a little section if you want to go and do a bit of countryside exploration then it's capable of doing it suspension is from their own brand wp apex and it's fully adjustable front and rear plenty of travel i think it's 170 mil in the forks and 177 mil in the shock you can have a play around and firm that up if you want to make sure it's not going to bottom out when you're off-road feels really good feels great on the road feels great off-road so absolutely no problems there and that extra bit of travel compared to something like the 390 duke will give you a bit more ground clearance as well the subframe is bolt on so should you have a spill and bend it you're not replacing the whole frame you can just replace that section which is quicker and cheaper of course and then you've got those grippy foot pegs so you can remove those rubber inserts and if it does get muddy or wet or slippy the little teeth on the pegs are going to dig into your boots you've got a 19 inch front wheel here so it'll roll better over undulating surfaces the 17 is more standard on the rear and then they've got tkc 70 tires from continental so a little bit of on-road a little bit of off-road but like i say it's more kind of light gravel riding green lanes and that sort of thing that these will be decent for in terms of the rider aids there's abs which has an off-road mode so it it will give you a bit less intervention on the front and then the abs on the rear brake is completely disabled so if you do want to slide it into a turn that sort of thing then you've got the option and then traction control it's pretty keen the traction control on this bike so if you're trying to climb a hill you would probably find as the rear wheel slips that it's a bit too invasive and you might start to lose momentum so having the option to turn that off is going to obviously improve the off-road capabilities as well same could be said for the quick shifter as well i don't think that's something that you're realistically going to want to use off-road so you just go into the menu press a couple of buttons and it's switched off in terms of weight ktm quote 158 kilograms dry so it's probably something like 175 ish wet so not a super light bike doesn't really compare to a dedicated enduro or trail bike um, but it's certainly not like a 1250 gs or something where you're really carrying a lot of weight on the trails you know with bikes like this you can really take them in whatever direction you want with the accessories catalog so again here you've got crash protection available spoked wheels the off-road seat as well as an option and then you might be looking at something like tkc 80s which are a bit more knobbly than the tkc 70s from continental that it comes with so if that's your thing you could really customize it that way but honestly no real problems riding it straight out of the dealer as it is and just taking on some little roads like this one thing i noticed is the bars aren't super high so if there is a riser accessory i'd be tempted to fit that if i was doing a lot of off-roading i'm sure there'll be aftermarket risers as well so perhaps yeah a little bit more height when you stood on the bike might help but otherwise totally comfortable on these little trails around here and i proper enjoyed it actually as i've said in previous videos we don't have a lot of like big sweeping bends around here it's tighter country lanes that really you don't want to be picking up loads of speed on and that's why i really enjoy riding bikes in this sort of power range i'd probably pick something around the 50 60 70 horsepower mark nice and lightweight than i would over you know super powerful naked bike or sports bike and you know it performs pretty well so like i said you can dial the fully adjustable suspension in at this price point you know that's a nice option to have plenty of bikes in this part of the market don't come with that full adjustability and the little twiddlers on the top of the forks you know you can pretty much adjust those on the go 
brakes are from Bybray, so that's the kind of budget version of Brembo brakes. It's a single radial monoblock caliper on the front. Plenty of feel, plenty of stopping power for a bike of this weight. Feels really good and it's more than enough stopping power. It's also nice that the brake and clutch levers are adjustable so you can dial in the exact feel that you want. And it's also nice to be able to customize some of those rider aids. So both the ABS and traction control, I believe, are lean sensitive, or at very least the traction control is. If the conditions are a bit slippy, if it's wet, if you've got trees over the road where it stays damp, some of the leaves are starting to come down now. We've had a bit of a windy week, even though it's not quite autumn. So in those environments, you might want to keep ABS and traction control enabled, but like I said, the traction control is a little bit invasive, so the option to turn it off and really wring its neck is there. You could also argue that that off-road mode for the ABS with a bit less intervention and switching it off at the rear, if you're a bit more experienced and you like to um, brake hard and slide the back a bit, then that's there as well for road riding. The quick shifter, I don't know, there's quite a lot of resistance to the pedal. So in terms of the feel of the quick shifter, I wasn't particularly mad about it. And I think the gearbox is so nice and light, so light that sometimes it can be a bit difficult to find neutral. And I found that on the Vitpillen 701 as well. But once you start getting the knack of it, it's not too bad. And like I say, the gearbox is so light, the slipper clutch feels really nice and light as well. So the gearbox is a pleasure to use. The quick shifter isn't the best I've ever used. I do feel like it needs a good push to get it to go into the next gear in both directions. So mainly I've had that switched off and I've found it really nice to use. But if you are a rider who likes a quick shifter, it's always there. And sometimes it's nice just to play with these little gadgets to mix up your rides. You know, in many ways, something like this bike is great for those little country lanes where you've got hedges and you like to be up high and seeing over and looking for oncoming traffic. And it's light and it's flickable and it stops well. I went to the Malay Mala at the weekend, a great event, watched a bunch of racing. I knew I had to be back for about five for dinner with the family. And I must admit, I snuck off a bit early. I set my beeline navigation for a random route home and just took a couple of hours about it. It's only half an hour from my house to the event. But yeah, I really enjoy just blasting around country lanes, full throttle, because you know you're not gonna be doing speeds that are gonna get you in trouble or risk your life. And you can just proper enjoy it. In fact, it's got me wanting to try a 390 Duke. I've not ridden one but I'd imagine that's something I'd definitely enjoy as well. I think it's the culmination of all these strengths, the, the good stuff about it off-road, the good stuff about it on the road, the good stuff about it on the motorway, really actually all comes together to make it a really good little commuter for getting in and out of town. And realistically, that's the sort of market they're gonna sell a lot of these to. You know, you don't need buttloads of power. It's obviously accessible to new riders. Ideally, you're riding something that's got decent fuel economy, like I said, being up high, I like that. I like being able to see over the traffic in town. It's got good torque, so you're not having to really rev it to get that drive off the line to get ahead of the traffic. Of course, you need good brakes in town in case someone slams on in front of you. Of course, you need ABS. It's nice to have that lean, sensitive traction control as well. I mean, when you think about rider aids like that, you're often thinking about, you know, long sweeping bends, but actually it's pretty easy when you're down in first gear and maybe the lights go green and you're in the wet and you're turning making a right angle turn away from some lights it's easy to give it too much throttle and get the rear wheel spinning out i've certainly done it on my street twin anyway so those rider aids if you're commuting through winter they can be a real asset of course you've got the nav built in as well if you're going to different locations if you commute to multiple offices or to clients or that kind of thing that's always nice to have and really i found it just a super comfortable little bike that's quick enough really practical, fun to ride. And at the moment, I've got the F900R from BMW in the garage. I've got a little 125 from Herald, which is good around town, but really this is the, the sweet spot, you know. Anytime I've had to run a little errand recently, no questions, I've just gone for this bike. Is there anything I didn't like about it though? Well, I've mentioned the quick shifter was a little bit stiff. I've mentioned that sometimes it can be a bit fiddly to get it into neutral, although I'm sure if you own it over the course of time, you'll really fine tune the amount of pressure you need to put on the pedal to get it into neutral it's something that you can learn so i guess the only other thing would really be the looks i mean personally i like a more traditional looking bike like i say i've got a trans street twin so that's the sort of bike that i normally like the look of 
This has definitely got that insectoid look that KTMs have. It's pretty bright in the orange. I think they do it in white as well with orange stripes, a bit more subtle. I think that's probably more my cup of tea, but it's super subjective, this kind of thing anyway. And I know certainly that people don't like retro old school looking bikes that kind of just hark back to a, a previous era and really like stuff like this that's a bit more cutting edge a bit more future facing and if you like the look of the bigger ktms it certainly has some of those design characteristics especially this front end and really just bring it into a smaller capacity package one thing though i am looking out for i loved the look of the husvana vitpilen 701 i loved when i saw it at eichma last year the northern 901 concept as well that was one of my favorite bikes of the show they've said they're taking that into production and now this year they've also said that they're going to be making a bunch of smaller capacity norderns as well so i think they've said they're going to be making a 401 northern based on this frame engine this platform that's certainly something that would tick a lot of boxes for me because I really like the design style of the Husvanas. It's nice to have that option. If you want something a bit more retro looking, the Husvanas are there. If you like this kind of more bold and futuristic and angular look, then you've got the KTMs. But as always, I'd love to know what you think of this bike in the comments below, especially if you've ridden one or owned one. Let me know what you think. If you've got questions about it, leave those in the comments too. And of course, if you're new here and you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll catch you next time.